Just another brother with another humble question. Just another brother with another humble question. Uh. Welcome to A Brother With Questions. I am your host, B. Period. Man, I appreciate you for joining me. Please like, subscribe to the channel, and share, and comment as well. Tell me what you think about the video. Tell me if you agree. Tell me if you disagree. I just want to see what the conversation is with the people today. Uh, we're going to check out this uh, video. It, it comes from a YouTube channel. Um, Why did I just forget the name of the channel? <laughs> It'll come back to me in a second. Uh, but but the title of the video was The Surprising Relationship Between Trans Rights and God. And in light of what month we are in, I thought, let's let's take a look at what this particular... Now, this guy is a uh, pastor, and so his name is Frank Turek. Um, and so uh, we're going to hear his, his take uh, on this conversation between trans rights and God as he calls it. What are trans rights? What are they and who grants these rights? Now we need to start from the very beginning here and that rights only come from God. There is no right to anything unless God exists because if there is no God, it's just human beings um, with their own opinions what is good and what is bad and what is right and what is wrong and who has the so-called right to do X, Y, or Z. Only if God exists do rights exist at all. This means that if there is no God, there are no rights of any kind. There are no gay rights, trans rights, Christian rights, uh, the right to life, the right to abortion, the right to same-sex marriage, the right to natural marriage. There are no rights to any of this, anything. If there is no God. So I love that premise that every right we're given comes from the idea that there is a God. Um, as you can see, like I said, this gentleman is a, uh, I believe he is a pastor. Um, cross examine. That's the name of the channel. Cross examine. Um, and they do a lot of, as you might imagine, um, religious related material. But um, he begins the conversation about estab by establishing where rights come from. And so if you don't get a right from God, then we're only dealing with the thoughts and opinion of human beings. The scariest thought of that, though, is when we're talking about human beings, the gamut of what that could consist of. Because we know how we are. I'll just say this. I know how I am. So I can't imagine when you, when you take my thoughts and then you compound them with the billions of people that exist, where would we be? What kind of consensus would we have if we didn't have a God who established for us? what rights we have we need to establish that right up front and as you well know this is what our country began on the declaration of independence clearly states we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men were created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights among these are life liberty and pursuit of happiness and so there he goes right he, he starts with america the constitution and i know there's a lot of people that would go well, they didn't mean that when they wrote it. Eh, that, that's true. They didn't mean it in the spirit of the of the statement, that's for sure. But but the statement nonetheless exists. All men were created equal, endowed with endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, among these life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And and as a Christian, of course, we know our creator to be. God. And of course, Jefferson goes on to say that governments are instituted among men to secure these rights. In other words, the government doesn't give you your rights, as some people on CNN have said recently. The government simply recognizes the rights you already have. If a government gives you rights, it's not a right. It's just a preference because another government can come in and then take it away from you. And by definition, a right is something no one can take away. You have it regardless of what somebody else says. I love that thought. If a government gives you your rights, then the government can take them away. But even according to that statement, 
my rights are given to me by my creator. And, and, and when you think about this country, one of the th great things about our country is our freedom, freedom to say what we want to say, freedom to believe what we want to believe, freedom to live our lives as we choose. And when you compare that to some of the most more restricted places in this world, Yes, in some other places, the government does establish what people's rights are. But, in, but the beauty of this country is that our rights were not established by a man. Our rights were established by a God who gave us the freedom to make the decisions that we want. Now, he didn't do that without consequences. But he nonetheless gave us the freedoms that we want and the free will to do as we want. And that's the beauty about this place. So governments merely recognize rights or don't recognize rights, and that's when you have a bad government. Rights only can come from God. And when Jefferson says they're self-evident and endowed by these rights, uh, or this creator endows us with these rights, we intuitively know this. It's written on our hearts. but. The fact that these rights exist only exist because God exists. You can know you have a right if you're an atheist, but not be able to justify it because you're an atheist. So we're saying only if God exists do rights exist. So let's start with what are trans rights. First of all, all people are made in the image of God and should be treated with respect. But does this mean that everyone needs to agree that a man is actually a woman and must be called a woman. Is that a trans right? I love that statement. So we all get rights in this country and we all have a, um, had the freedom to choose to be what we want. But then does that mean I have to acknowledge you or acknowledge you as that thing? And I, and I believe, that to me, that's where that question, that's where that line comes. Because I have to give you your freedom, and I, and I give it to you. Be whoever you want to be. Be a cat, be a dog, I don't care. But, I, but don't make me or don't force me to do something that I don't have to do. Because I, too, have a freedom. Don't take my freedom from me. Or that a man must be able to use a woman's bathroom or shower or locker room facility. Is that considered a trans right? Or that a man can play women's sports. Wins the NCAA championship. Or maybe more aptly put, a boy can play girl sports in high school. To a competitive and controversial weekend for Max Beggs. Are those considered trans rights? If those are trans rights, we have a big problem. Why? Because essentially what the folks who are advocating for trans rights are saying is that all of society must give up their rights, be it their rights of conscience, their religious rights, or their health and safety rights, to accommodate these new trans rights. I mean, the writers of the column that precipitated this uh, question that Mark sent me, in the column, they talk about human rights and protection, but they are actually advocating violating human rights and protection by allowing girls or allowing boys into girl showers or allowing men into women's showers or restrooms. And it's not just, say, someone who identifies, a man who identifies as a woman that can cause a problem. Any male can take advantage of this open bathroom policy. You can just, even if you're, even if you don't have gender dysphoria, you can just say, "Hey, I, today I identify as a woman," and go into a bathroom, go into a woman's shower, go into a woman's changing facility. And according to the trans rights activists, the women who are put in danger over this have now lost their rights, apparently. And if you don't, so. This is one of the, this is one of those challenges 
that we're we're dealing with or or trying to deal or trying to understand how to navigate in in giving people freedom so we give you the freedom to be who you are but does that now extend itself to allowing you to now be in spaces where others may not be comfortable with you being who you are and that's that that's that slippery slope that we are we seem to be dipping and dipping and dipping and dipping our toes further and further into the water and still trying to understand where the balance is I don't think this happens and has happened you probably haven't heard of Scott Smith and his daughter in the Loudoun County school system in Virginia in 2021 Scott Smith's daughter was raped by a boy wearing a skirt claiming to be a girl she was raped in the bathroom and uh, this made the news we'll put the link in the show notes because uh, about a month after this happened he went to a school board meeting and it was denied that this happened and a, a, a a scuffle took place, you could well imagine, because the, the school system apparently tried to cover this up. And you can read the whole story. I don't have time to get into all the details. You can read the story in the link that we'll put in the show notes. But they tried to cover this up. And then the student was actually transferred to another school where he did it again. And so th this is one of those dangers that a lot of people are fearful of. When it comes to this, now I'm I want to acknowledge that this is not no this is not the norm, right? This isn't this isn't as far as I know, this isn't happening every day, where these kinds of things are taking place. But nonetheless, this is the paranoia that people have, and the fear that people have about when you make these types of unilateral decisions without necessarily considering the consequences of what those decisions are. Because you have to respect that the, in this particular case, we're talking about young girls um, who are asked to be in a locker room with a boy. Even if that boy, you know, says he feels like a woman and is a woman now, that boy still has the parts of a man. And so now you're asking these young girls who um, are just like a young boy, still trying to understand who they are, still trying to understand their own body, still trying to understand what it is to, you know, their sexuality, if you will. Now you're asking them who are, who are probably already uncomfortable even with women because a lot of men, a lot of young boys are uncomfortable with other young boys in the locker room as well. So now you take these young girls and you put this young boy in there. They're already nervous about each other and now there's a young boy in there as well. Regardless of how he identifies, it's got to be number one confusing, but also nerve wracking on their part. And so, again, there is a balance that has to be reached so that not only we are giving this young child the freedom to be who they are, but giving these young women the freedom to feel safe in a place where they should be safe. And then he was finally put in jail. So why are we saying that the safety and security and privacy of girls, that those rights must give way to the right, apparent right of somebody saying, look, I just feel like a, a girl, I, or I, I'm a boy, but I feel like a girl. I have gender dysphoria. And so the whole world must change because of this particular mental delusion that I have. And that's really what it is. It is a delusion. You think you're a, a girl when you're really a boy, or you think you're a boy when you're really a girl. Why does the rest of the world then need to accommodate the mental condition that you have by changing everything they know about reality and even jeopardizing their own privacy and safety? 
it does. And, and that, and that, I think, is the question. So I'm going to stop his video. His video is pretty much over anyway. But that's a question. And then I'm not here to give you all the answers, but I'd love to hear what you have to say. Where does it, where does the line begin? Where does the line end? What is safe for everyone? What does that balance look like? I don't know. That's my conversation, though. I'm B period. And I'm out.